Welcome to God of Run. This is Will Sanchez. My very special guest tonight is Ann Posesti. She is currently the secretary for the Prospect Park Track Club, but she also has been its past president and vice president. We're going to learn all about Ann and the Prospect Park Track Club. Ann, welcome. Thank you. I'm pl very pleased to be here. And let's get started by introducing yourself to our audience. Where were you born? A little bit about your family, something about your education. Okay, well, I was uh, born uh, in St. Elizabeth's Hospital in Washington Heights, and for the first two years of my life, we lived in the Bronx, which is the reason why I am a um, dyed in the wool Yankee fan, and my mother would have it no other way. Even at two years old. At two years old. I, was, I, I tell the story that I actually uh, came out of the womb in pinstripes. Uh, we moved from the Bronx to Jackson Heights in Queens. Uh, my grandparents lived with us. Uh, my grandfather died when I was four and my grandmother when I was 15. Hmm. I have uh, two siblings, uh, a brother who lives in Fairlawn, New Jersey, and a sister who lives in um, Plantation, Florida. I went to grammar school in, at St. Joan of Arc in Jackson Heights and on to Bishop McDonald High School, the first two years of which were at an annex in Queens, and the last two years were at what we called Big Bishops on Eastern Parkway in Brooklyn. Oh. And coincidentally and ironically, um, and you could never foretell this uh, ever happening, I now live diagonally across from Bishop McDonald, what was Bishop McDonald High School. And oh. of course, when I was going there, it took me an hour and a half by bus and subway to get there. <laughs> Two years after high school, I got married and had three children, have three daughters of whom I am very proud, and four grandchildren. My gosh. And then in my 30s, a program was begun uh, at Queens College for non traditional students. I got in and I. Um, eventually graduated from Queens College with a uh, major in home economics and a minor in education. So I was going to be a home ec teacher uh -huh. with my newly minted diploma. There were no jobs, not just in home economics, but across the board. It was in the 70s. Uh, went on to CW Post to get a master's in public administration. Excellent. So I then had a very eclectic career. Um, <laughs> but before we jump into okay. that, I want to go back to your childhood. Mm -hmm. We know you're a born uh, <laughs> Yankee fan. Yeah. Were you athletically involved as a youngster? Come on, Will. When I was a youngster, yes. women did not sweat. Oh. That was just not in the cards. And I was always very big. I was tall. Um, I was... Um, I was kind of overweight, and uh, and I continued to be klutzy. Uh, I got rid of some of the, I didn't get rid of the tallness, I got rid of some of the weight, but uh -huh. I didn't get rid of the klutziness. I did try out for the basketball team, and because I was tall, I was going to play, but then fate stepped in, and I got, I contracted rheumatic fever, so I wasn't able to do that. Oh. No, I was not athletic. If you were a tomboy, mm -hmm. you were athletic. Okay. If you weren't a tomboy, then you didn't sweat. So <laughs> really? I went to an all-girls high school. Uh -huh. So th the most athletic thing we did was to keep our, our really ugly gym, uh, gym suits pressed so that they could pass inspection. Uh, but uh, there really wasn't a lot of athleticism going on. Oh, that's so, I don't know, interesting or sad or both. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It certainly is reflective of the time. Okay. And I think that I, certainly I celebrate Title IX as being a uh, wonderful gift to to women. Oh, you missed out on Title IX. I did, but my children were because I have three daughters. My children benefited from it. Yes. Okay. So, how did you get involved in sports? Again, going back to the seventies, it was the time the first burst of uh, interest in running. Uh, Jim Fix was the uh, was the advocate. And he had a, uh, got a lot of uh, coverage in, in the media. And quite a few people were, you know, invested in sneakers and went out on the, the open road to run. It was the, an easy way to, to become physically fit. You didn't have to have a partner. It wasn't particularly expensive. And you could, um, you could do it. So that's what happened. I 
started to run um, very slowly, very short distances at first. I would be running the streets of Valley Stream and uh, I was doing it strictly for fitness. I had absolutely no intention of competing. And then when I moved to Brooklyn, I also um, got a job at um, Brooklyn Union Gas. One of the women in the company recruited me to run for the company because they needed women for the team. Sort of a corporate challenge kind of thing. Uh, exactly the corporate challenge. How oh. did you know? <laughs> I was terrified. And as luck would have, a monsoon struck. So we did not go. So I breathed a sigh of relief. <laughs> but there was going to be a, a race in Prospect Park, the Kenny Dolan race. And now I'm running on home turf in front of hometown people, mm -hmm. which made it even more terrifying. Mm. But I was committed to it, so I ran. And uh, my, my absolute terror was that I was going to be last. Uh, the gun goes off, and this crowd goes. And all of a sudden, all of these people are running past me. And I get to the hill, which anyone who has run in Prospect Park knows the hill I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. It's the Zoo Hill, otherwise known as Heartbreak Hill. And there was someone running ahead of me. So I came up beside him. And I looked over, and he had a he had a he number did. on. So he was in the race, and I was going to pass him. As it turned out, I was not last. I finished the race, and that was the first of many races. So excellent. Yeah. And did you get blamed for that race? I do believe. I do believe. I think I might have, and I think that really sealed my fate. You no, know, I think it was a trophy that we got. And oh. of course, you know, I was already in my. 50s at that point. Eventually, you got involved with the Prospect Park Track Club, yes, which is yes. the oldest running club in Brooklyn. Right. Probably right. the largest. Yes. Because yes. it's been around for over 40 years, yep. I believe. Mm -hmm. It was founded so, by uh, Harry Murphy. The runners uh, of the Prospect Park Track Club were very elite runners, and they have such high regard for him as a man and as a coach mm -hmm. that I really am very sad that I didn't have the opportunity to, to know him. Mm -hmm. Harry was involved with the Roadrunners, New York Roadrunners, and at the time that Fred LeBeau had the vision of taking the, um, the marathon and wanted to do it in the five boroughs, Harry helped him um, lay out the, um, the route for the uh, five borough. Uh, right. New York City and, Marathon. And got the best part for Brooklyn. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, quite. A f I think it's 13 miles is in Brooklyn. That's so right. half half the New York City Marathon is in Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Now started to do roadrunner races, and I had three friends uh, from different parts of my life who were running the marathon one year, and it was one of those gorgeous uh, November days, and everybody was happy. Uh, the uh, the police were there, and everybody was smiling, and it, it was just a great experience. And I stayed there for, you know, a while. And the longer I stayed, I was aware of the fact that these people look like me. I could do this. You know, the Kenyans had passed, but all of a sudden I was seeing myself in this group. Mm -hmm. And that was the day I thought, I thought, next, I want to do this. Made the decision. I made the decision, started training, and I ran in 1993. Did you follow up a specific training program at that time? Not that I remember. It was just um, run a lot of miles. I finished. Uh, unfortunately, the, ch the shoes that I chose to run in were poorly fitted, and so I crossed the finish line with bloody socks. <laughs> and I have to say, it was one of those life-changing experiences. Wow. Were your daughters there to cheer you? Yes. On? Well, they, uh, they got lost. Uh, but they, I saw them on First Avenue. Okay. My sister came up from Florida. Uh, I didn't know she was coming up from Florida. And as I'm approaching my daughters, I see this woman, and I kept thinking to myself, that, I know who that, who is that woman? <laughs> and that was really very special. Oh, wow. And my, gra my granddaughter, my um, oldest daughter, had my um, my granddaughter with her, so Great, so with all the jumping them. and hugging. Oh, yes. And oh, yes. It was. It ruined my time, <laughs> but that's go, okay. Go, go, right. Anne, I, go I could have mom. broken four out. As I'm crossing the finish line, the first thought that came into my head, now keep in mind, I'm saying all the way up, 
You I have know. one in me. I crossed the finish line. I saw the clock, and I thought, I can do better than that. <laughs> so the next year, I was back on the, on the at the starting line. Was better fitted shoes? Much better fitted shoes and took 45 minutes off my time. Excellent. So did you have a training program the second year? I did the training runs uh, at Roadrunners and uh, the long runs that they that they okay. promote and so stuff like that. Pretty much you went to the internet? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Um, so at some point you became more involved with Prospect Park because yes. you became an officer. Oh, I, I didn't connect the dots there. Uh, I had heard that in order to get into the marathon, that being a member of a local club would be very helpful. Now, remember, this is back in 1993. Mm. I had heard about Prospect Park Track Club, and I called, and I put my name forward to, you know, be part of the club. And Al Goldstein, in the tradition of Harry Murphy, Harry used to be the one who would take the applications to road, directly to Roadrunners, I mm -hmm. think. And um, uh, Al, who was president of the club at the time, uh, would take the applications to the post office in Manhattan mm -hmm. uh, as a as a group. a group. Then in subsequent years, it was um, I remember taking the, taking my own application. We all took our own applications, in uh, the, the clubs no longer had right. any special. Right. Do you remember what the fees were back in nineteen? Was it ninety three? Maybe sixty dollars or something wow. like that. Yeah, maybe. Now it's over one hundred and fifty. Yeah, and I think, whatever it is, and I think next year is supposed to be over two hundred. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you became a member, but then you sort of rose to the ranks because eventually became president. It's amazing. The, uh, the it was definitely on the fast track. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe uh, it was that nobody else was stepping forward. But, uh, yeah, I, I have always had that, I don't know if it's a talent, uh, but when I become involved in an organization, I become involved. Mm -hmm. And so I, all, you know, they asked me to be vice president, and that was rather a benign office and, at the time. And then... Bobby Fisher, who was the president, had succeeded Al after having worked with Al, you know, very closely for a number of years, um, had decided not to run. And I, there I was, standing in the vice president's... Well, that's what they did, the vice president. <laughs> that's right. It's You're like, next. Whoa. <laughs> so that. you became president in 1999, you said? And yes, it was, because uh, I, I, I didn't stand for presidency in 2007, so okay. and I was, it was eight years. I was, okay. uh, and it was, it was a great experience. I learned a lot. I now co-race director with the current president, Tom Meany, uh, of our annual turkey trot. And, and that occurs on Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving morning. Thanksgiving morning. And the idea is, uh, do you exercise before that's you That's right. The you, idea is, you, to, is to eat without guilt, come out to Prospect Park, run five miles, you get a, um, a medal, this year we have upgraded our medals. They're really super duper medals. Every finisher gets a medal. The, there are no awards with the exception of the first three men, the first three women, and the first uh, Bishop Ford High School uh, alumna or alumni, whether it's male or female, uh, finisher. Uh, and they get uh, a, an apple pie. For <laughs> Not a turkey. Not apple a turkey, pie. no, an <laughs> apple pie. And uh, last year, we capped the race at 2,500, and we plan to do that again this year. And it sells out? We were sold out the Monday before the race. Wow. Yeah, it a lot was of really people, thrilling. A lot of people want to go to Brooklyn because it's yeah. open to, to anybody, you yes. know, just not to yes. local residents. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's one of those races that over the years has, um, it, it attracts family. So a lot of uh, younger people who have moved away come back to Brooklyn to their parents or their grandparents' house for the holidays. Right. Oh, college interesting. College students come back for, you know, from college, and they come and they do the turkey try. Interesting. So we have Santa Claus is one of the um, one of the attractions, and he's out on the course cheering people on. Doing the Thanksgiving trot. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> early right. Thanks Thanksgiving, well, I mean early Christmas, rather. The Macy's Parade, the last float is Santa Claus. Oh, interesting. So we, are, we, just good took, company. we just took a page from Macy's book. Interesting. But the, uh, the Prospect Park is also well known for is Cherry Tree. Yes. It's not a 10-miler? Yeah. It's around President's, uh, President's okay. Day. It's a 10-miler. We call it the Race for the Hardcore. 
And so it's three loops of uh, Prospect Park. So you get to see and to deal with uh, Heartbreak Hill three times. Oh, my gosh. And we now have, uh, over the last few years, we have relays. So you can do three, you know, one loop of, of the park if you have two teammates. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a regular relay with uh, handoffs. And uh, the competition is pretty fierce. And uh, so that's... Uh, uh, that has become a very important part of the... Uh, Excellent. You know, I almost did it once because I remember I went to Jack Rapids to pick up my uh, my uh, goodie bag mm -hmm. and tools. So Jack Rapids Sports involved in yeah. uh, some of yeah. those races? Yeah, Jack Rapids Sports has been a, is a long time uh, sponsor for both the, uh, the Cherry Tree and the uh, Turkey Tribe. And we're very grateful for that sponsorship. Also, we send four buses to the marathon start line and they now uh, line up near Jack Rabbit, and they open the store at 5:30 in the morning, so the people can use the bathrooms. This is the store at the Park Slope in Brooklyn, yeah, on on Seventh uh, Avenue. So we have this uh, long-term relationship with Jack Excellent. Rabbit. Excellent, four buses. Yeah, and uh, and these are open to members of the track club and anybody else. Yes, the buses are going are open to track club members and friends oh. running the marathon. And uh, this year, of course, with the rather controversial and um, policy that Roadrunners first announced and then modified about uh, baggage, what we have always done is we have transported bags for, the mem for people who are on our buses. We had our own baggage check. We rent a school on 77th Street between Amsterdam and Columbus for a reception after the after the marathon right. so that you can come off the finish line it's about two blocks from the finish line and come to the school and have something to eat something warm or cold to drink you can meet your your family there uh, they sell out it's amazing seeing the evolution over over the years you know we had one bus and then we we saw that it was getting popular and okay, we'll go for two buses, and you hold your breath. I know we're four, and we could really do more, but the problem is that we can't handle comfortably more people at the reception. Right, right, so right. So we have to be careful of, of safety, which is the reason why we capped the um, the turkey tribe. It's, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now you also do a very interesting as a uh, community-minded, the last 10 miles of yes. the New York City yeah. Marathon. Yeah, that, that goes way back. That goes, because I've done that several times. In fact, I tell everybody, that Saturday we're going to go and yeah. meet, I think you meet at First Avenue and, and 50, 59th Street. 59th Street. Yeah, yeah. And all the clubs yes. send representatives. Yeah, well, I go back, as I say, my first marathon was 93, and I had been in a Roadrunner uh, race, uh, training program. And one of the um, fellows who was in, in the class said that the previous year that uh, his group had done this last 10 miles and how it was really terrific. I sent the word out just personally, you know, to some friends uh, about this last 10 miles and never thinking about it because mm -hmm. I was a newbie in, in the track club. Mm -hmm. You know, I had, I had joined so I could get into the, the marathon. marathon. Yeah. And <clears throat> a friend of mine, uh, dear friend Terry Thompson. Terry brought her car in and she became a rolling aid station and um, set up shop at 103rd Street, then went to Engineers Gate, and then to the, um, I think, to Tavern on the Green. Right. So um, that, and then she was able to run the marathon and she she finished very successfully. And that was her, her marathon. She, she did a marathon after that. But the legacy lived lived after because wow. we um, took it on ninety four. Excellent. Yeah, and so yes, now we do the last ten and everybody miles. Everybody looks f forward to yeah. it. Yeah. The moment we hear the date, we all email each other. You know, so right. whatever it is. Right. Yeah? Sunday the twenty eighth this year. And last year we had four cars that needed to do the rolling aid station, and if you remember, last year was snowy and sleety. Hmm. So we had a lot of people. But, um, and I expect that we will again this year. No doubt. Yeah. I understand uh, New York City Runs is going to be involved with this year's uh, event. We have uh, a wonderful partnership with uh, S Steve Lastow, who is the, uh, uh, the guiding light of uh, New York City Runs. And uh, uh, he's involved in a lot of our, 
uh, events, uh, both uh, handling the registration and the database, it's anything that we're doing. And we even extended it to the uh, the Speed Series this year. So the Al Goldstein, can, the Al Speed Goldstein Speed, Speed Series, named yeah. after the, f the second president, president of the club. Right. He was president for seven years, so I just passed him by a nose. But uh, as Al is uh, is still active, he uh, in fact gives out the awards at uh, uh, Roadrunners events. And I think he's going to be 95 or 96. Wow, and, yeah. he, and he still trots along. That's he's, great. Uh, he's, he's quite a, quite a guy. Wanted to discuss some of the future challenges that either you face athletically or with the Prospect Park Track Club. Hmm, that's a good question. I have done five uh, triathlons, five sprint triathlons. And I have no plans of going. But of course, I said that about the marathon to me. <laughs> but I, I think with some well, certitude, I can number. say that. Right. <laughs> I would say that the challenges I'm facing now um, are trying to um, re reduce my time on the half marathon because I have I have retired from marathoning, and now are focus and now am focusing on half marathons. And I would really like to bring bring it down under th the three you hours. You want a new PR. Yeah, see the problem is that it won't be a PR, but it will be like in the second half of my journey. Well, it could be a PR in that age group. Well, yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> I did a Bronx 10 miles uh, last week or so, and I took a fall, which is part of my klutzy oh. uh, uh, persona. And But I did manage to uh, elude the, uh, the sweet bus so I got credit for the uh, for the race, and of course came in first in my age group, which <laughs> is not too tough when you're the only one in your age group. Oh, but I will take one. it. I will take it. <laughs> you still get a you still get a trophy or a medal. For that. Right. Well, I have to go to Roadrunners and pick it up. But oh, okay. yes, whatever uh, it is, okay. it's, uh, they don't it's ship it to you. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. And what about Prospect Park Track Club? What are some of their challenges? I think that with the club, I think that there are opportunities uh, ahead. Uh, I don't necessarily see them as challenges. I think that what we have evolved into is we have become thoughtful, in, and I, I use the fact that we are capping our races as, uh, as a, um, an example of that. Um, I think that we are dedicated to not necessarily growing the club in terms of numbers, but rather making the experience of our members the best they can be, mm -hmm. so that there is a focus on um, encouraging members to uh, uh, think about what kinds of activities they would like. Example, during the summer, one of our members uh, decided that running from Prospect Park to Coney Island on Friday night and watching the fireworks would be really cool. Mm -hmm. And so she put out an email on our forum and it started slowly, but by the end of the summer, it was a root and tootin' time. <laughs> so that was um, that's that kind of grew organically. Interesting. And interesting. How far is that from? Uh, it's six miles uh, from uh, from the park to Coney, Coney Island. Island. Oh, that's very doable. And people doable. could either um, could either then run back, you know, after the fireworks and after having, you know, some libation. So they could run back, take some of the boardwalk as well. Yeah, yeah. Or they could, uh, if they didn't feel like running back, they could stay there and or bring a metro card and take the. Uh, uh, take the train back, which I think many of them did. So it was a great event. Well, let me ask about the a sort of closing in, in the boardwalk. You know, they, it needs rehabilitation, mm -hmm. and it's a big controversy in that area because the local community wants it to keep it with natural wood, mm -hmm. and the parks committee or the parks department, I should say, mm -hmm. I think they want to do some kind of synthetic. Yeah, the track club gets involved in. Putting in, in sharing input in that kind of stuff? I think that probably a number of our members that live in that area, because even though we're centered around Prospect Park, mm -hmm. we have members from all over, and not just from Brooklyn, but any members down there certainly would be, uh, would have an opinion about it. Yeah. But as a club, we haven't been asked. Mm -hmm. um, I can just say from you know my own experience running on boardwalks, uh, if they're not kept in good repair, they do pose uh, a threat, and um, 
especially for you know the of the Brooklyn Half Marathon, right. uses the boardwalk, mm -hmm. uh, and it can especially if you have a lot of people and it's hard to see where the nails are yeah, coming yeah, up yeah. It is, it is or dangerous. the boards. You know when you're running close behind someone else, uh, it does mean that a lot of people do go down. Yeah. So, uh, but there are pros and cons for both, and I certainly can understand the, the historically how people would like to keep the the natural wood. Yeah. But I, th but there may be uh, some good reason to consider the synthetic. Synthetics, I, I, I don't know. Oh, I guess no is a controversy. Yeah. I, I heard about it actually. There's another controversy in Van Cortlandt Park, the Putnam oh. Trail. And that the two groups are talking to each other mm -hmm. and seeing how, because the Parks Department is involved yeah. in the Putnam Trail situation, they want to uh, replace it with asphalt. Yes, yes. And, yeah. you know, and the community goes, asphalt? Right. Know, why, right. why would they want to do that? Right. We, we need the green space. Yes. Thank you so much for coming in. It's thank been a you. pleasure. Oh, thank you for inviting me. This has been, uh, this has been lovely. Terrific. Excellent, and a continued success thank in you. all your activities. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay.